Spanning the globe with Christian programming and the Word of God 24 hours a day. This is the Gospel America Network. Broadcasting on the internet to every nation that Jesus is Lord. This is the Gospel America Network. Hi everybody, I'm Gary Jenkins and coming up next on Gospel America, we're talking about a message of saying something. It's all coming up next on Gospel America. The Sword of the Spirit Ministries presents a broadcast ministry lifting up the name of Jesus with a message of hope for these challenging times. Sharing the Word of God with people in every nation around the world on television and the internet. This is Gospel America and here's your host, Apostle Dr. Gary Jenkins. Hi everybody, I'm Gary Jenkins and welcome to another edition of Gospel America. Now this week we have a message we want to share with you. If you see something, say something. It's about being witnesses of Jesus Christ. Many of us have witnessed things that God has done in our lives or in the lives of other people. But we now need to say something. And society is absolutely getting ridiculous. And we're going to share that message with you in a moment. But right now, I want to invite all of you who are pastors who share the word of God and have a vision to preach the gospel around the world. You can do it by joining the Gospel America Network. It's free. There's no charge for joining. So give us a call at 203-410-6053 or you can email us at gospelamerica at earthlink.net. We want to hear from you because God is so wonderful and we need to tell the whole world about the goodness of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So get on board with us on the Gospel America Network. Email us at gospelamerica at earthlink.net. That email address again is gospelamerica at earthlink.net or you can call us at 203 410-6053. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, we want to thank you so much for tuning in and being a part of the Gospel America Network. And now it's time to get into the Word of God. And so if you're ready, so am I. Let's go to church. I will lift my hands to you as I give you all the glory. Think about this song, hallelujah. I will lift my voice, oh, to you as I give you all the praise, hallelujah. He's worthy. I will lift my hands to you as I give you all the I got it? 
All right, St. Luke 24, starting at verse 45. <clears throat> and it says, Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the Scriptures, and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. And he led them out as far as to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. I was watching television one day and you know it's amazing how when, you, when you're watching TV or you're at a movie uh, and I, I hope y'all not too spiritual that y'all don't do those things but I do. But while I'm watching television certain things come on the TV that actually jolt me into the spirit. And I don't think they were designed to do that, but, but it happens. I was watching this commercial from, I guess it's the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, folks I work for, and they said, they showed the woman going, and the little girl with a backpack going up the escalator. Anybody ever seen that commercial? And they said in the commercial, if you see something, say something. What they're talking about, if you see something out of the ordinary, you should be alerting somebody to what you saw. If you see something that looks suspicious, you ought to tell somebody. We're living, unfortunately, in a day and age where you just can't ignore strange stuff anymore. Because if you do, it could cause harm to somebody else. But in this particular case, I, I thought about it as I watched that television commercial, and all of a sudden the Holy Ghost began to talk to me. How many know you can watch TV and the Holy Spirit will speak to you? <laughs> How many know you can go to the movie, you can be going, going to get entertained, and next thing you know you're sitting there and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit dealing with you. I'm like, you know what, this is a trip. I thought God was supposed to only deal with me in church. But no matter where I go, every once in a while, the Holy Spirit begins to deal with me and reveals a mystery about heaven or about Christ or about something that God wants me to know. And so as I was watching this television commercial, if you see something, say something, all of a sudden the Spirit of the Lord began to deal with me. Now, when somebody sees something, and they report it to the police, or if it's a, a matter where you have to go to court, you become a witness. And a witness does what in a courtroom? Testifies. And so, we need to provoke our testimony about what we see when God is operating. Amen. I thought about that thing. I said, ooh, that's kind of interesting, God. And so as I was reading this and Jesus was talking to the disciples and even though they had walked with him for approximately three and a half years, they still did not have an understanding of scripture. How do I know this? Because the Bible says then he opened up their understanding that they might understand the scripture. It takes the Lord to give you revelation of the word. Your intellect alone is not enough. The Bible is not a textbook that you can just study like a college book or a college course and you think, okay, I got it now. Because the words in the Bible are spirit and are life. The Bible, the words in the word of God are alive. So anyway, Jesus began to open up their understanding so that they could understand the scriptures because even though they walked with Christ, they didn't understand the scripture. Just like when people come to church. You can come to church Sunday after Sunday, but do you really understand the scripture? Do you really understand the Bible? 
And that's not a put down, this is simply, I mean, people just do stuff out of tradition, out of custom, but they really don't understand why they do certain things. So Christ opened up their understanding that they would understand the scripture. And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And this is the, the key verse here. And ye are witnesses of these things. My question to, to the church today, and to those of you watching on television, my, my question is simple. Have you seen anything good? The world is focusing on the negative stuff, the bad stuff. But have you seen anything good? Have, is there anybody in here that is a witness to the power of God? I don't hear nothing. Nobody didn't see anything. Has God ever done anything good for you? Has God ever worked a miracle for you? Has God ever raised you from a sick bed? Yes. Has God ever provided for you when you knew you didn't have enough money coming in to meet all the bills? Oh, talk to me, church. Yes. Has God done something good for you that you knew in the bottom of your heart it was not by your power? There's nothing that you could do that can make this come about the way it did. My question is, if you see something, say something. Come on. When I say the first half, you say the second half. If you see something, say something. if you see something, say something, it's time for the church to start talking. Amen. It's time for the church to start telling the world about the goodness of God. It's okay to talk about what Jesus did. It's okay to talk about what the disciples did. It's okay to talk about Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and, and, and all of the, the great patriarchs of the Bible. But God is still the same God today as He was back then. Amen. Jesus Christ is the same today as He was yesterday. Amen. He does not change. Amen. Yet, we're living in a generation where nobody's talking about Jesus. Not openly. The world wants you to talk about everything else except Jesus. You can talk about history. You can talk about politics. You can discuss what's in the news. Uh, you can get on the Oprah show. You can get on all, all the different talk shows and go on the talk show network if you want to. But talk about anything you want. But I dare you to talk about Jesus and tell somebody about what he's doing. See, the problem I have is that I saw something. And it's, it's bubbling up in me and I got to tell somebody. Yeah. It's bubbling up in me. How, do you, well, how did you feel when you first received the Holy Ghost? How did you feel? What happened when you were born again? See, we have gotten so comfortable in our relationship with Christ. We don't, we're not excited anymore. You, you know what we do? We treat Christ like you, you've been married for 50 years. And all the thrill is gone. Hello, somebody. <laughs> But when you see something, say something. The problem is, we won't go nowhere where we can say something. We testify to our sins, to the same people every Sunday. Oh, bless the Lord. Thank God for waking up. Keep me, keep me, you know, through, through the week. He bless me. I see, saw a new day. You know, and we say, you know, we say the same stuff to the same people. Man, I want to see some new folk. I want to testify to somebody about the goodness of the Lord. Jesus said, we are witnesses. Well, if I'm a witness, then Lord, put me on the witness stand. If I'm going to be a witness, let me testify. If I'm going to be a witness, let me speak of the things of God. If I'm going to be a witness, let me tell somebody that I saw something that the Lord has done. It's not a strange package. It's not a suspicious package. But hallelujah, he took an old vile corrupt man like me. He took an old woman chasing drunkard man like me. He took a guy that spoke a little herb. Oh, that's right. I'm not like Bill Clinton. I didn't just inhale. I took some of that stuff. I was... <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Can I just be honest with you? Yes. Hallelujah. But it just so happens, see, I don't like cigarettes, so I didn't like marijuana either. So that's the only reason. It's not because I was such a good guy. That's just, I don't like smoke. It stinks. Mess your clothes up. So anyway, so God cured me from that before I even got started. But I tried. I experimented. I tried. 
But see, God came into my life. Hallelujah. And that man that tried to hook and poke and slide and glide and get away with stuff in the middle of the... Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing now. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost came down and got a hold of me, snatched me by the collar of my neck, pulled me over here and said, Fool, I'm going to save you. And he filled me with the Holy Ghost and I began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave utterance. And the next thing you knew, my thinking changed. I, I used to hate people. <laughs> Huh? Oh, y'all not saying nothing. There were folk that just looked at me and I didn't like the way they looked at me, so I just automatically hated them. Oh, Lord, I'm the only one that's done that. There were people on my job. I had a supervisor who was just an arrogant person. And just because they were arrogant, I hated them. That was when I was still in captivity. But one day the Holy Ghost got a hold of me. He slapped the hatred out of me and put some love in my soul. And the next thing you know, I can't understand it. I don't know how it happened. I don't know what he did to me. But he twisted up my mind and he twisted up my heart, shook it up, turned it upside down. And the next thing you know, I started loving people I thought I could never love. I started, hallelujah, doing things for people even when it would hurt me sometime to do it. And the next thing you know, something strange began to happen. My ways began to change. My speech began to change. And I said, what's up with this? And somebody said, I saw something. They saw the power of God moving in my life. And so they began to say something. I came to tell somebody, you may have been caught up in a whole bunch of mess years ago, but now God has changed your life. It's time for you to say something because you're a witness. And the world, hallelujah, is the witness stand. And we ought to stand up and tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord if you know what I'm talking about and you feel like praising God put your hands together and give God some praise in the house hallelujah if you see something no y'all don't mean it if you see something hallelujah if you see something thank you how many are going to say something hallelujah I saw God change my life he still uh, he ain't done with me yet See, I'm not perfect yet, I, but, but I'm, thank God I ain't where I used to be. Amen. When the disciples went out into the world, Jesus sent them out by twos, they went out in the world, and they would tell people, they didn't just preach the gospel, but they would tell people what Jesus, what they saw Jesus do. That's why we have the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the gospels. The reason we had the Gospels are because those men were witnesses of what Jesus said and did. And they were martyred because they spoke out and told the world what Jesus did. They told the world what Jesus said. The reason the church won't say nothing is because we are scared. We don't want to be placed into a situation where will be threatened or will be ridiculed or will be outcast or we're not our friends are not gonna quote unquote like us and want to socialize with us anymore. And so we have gotten into a state where the church compromises its stand with Christ. Now I'm sorry, I know everybody wasn't in the Marine Corps, but I was. And I was taught that when the enemy comes, you charge him. You come after him. You don't sit there and see the enemy sitting there tearing up folk and killing folk. And you sit there and go, well, he ain't bothering me, so <laughs> I'll just pray for him. No, when the devil shows up, it's time for the saints of God to arm themselves and go out and rescue their brother and sister. When you see something, say something. when you see a brother in captivity... When you see a sister in captivity, when you see somebody that needs some spiritual help, don't sit around and act like you got to take an opinion poll before you open your mouth. Hallelujah. The disciples suffered because they were witnesses. Listen, if you're going to be a witness for God, you lose this mentality that you're not going to suffer for being a witness. Lose it. Because I'm going to tell you right now. Any preacher tells you uh, that everything's all right. Yeah, and we sing that song. Yeah, everything, everything will be all right. Y'all ever heard that song? Everything ain't going to be all right. 
turn on the television, watch the news, pay attention to stuff happening around you. The world's not getting better, it's getting worse. My gosh, I was enjoying my Thanksgiving dinner. I turned on the television and watched the news. And what did I see? People getting ready for Black Friday. And here's the sad part. Black Friday ain't Black Friday no more. It done spread over to Thanksgiving night. Stores open at 9 o'clock on Thursday night. They can't even wait for Friday. We can't even give God one little lousy day to say thank you, Lord, for blessing us. There's something wrong with America. If you see something, say something. If you see something, I'm going to say something. I'm going to call a news conference. I'm going to talk to the news media. I'm so mad. I just got to do this. I know somebody's going to probably think I'm a coop, but I don't care. We have lost our values, people. We've gotten so greedy. We've gotten so... I don't know what it is you want to call it. Caught up in this frenzy like little sharks. We got caught. The merchants, as soon as the merchants say, look, I'll give you a large screen TV for $200. Yeah, okay. And you know what? You done gobbled down your turkey, done burped, and then went and got your tent and your sleeping bag, and you done went out been to the store, and you done camped out from 8 o'clock at night till the store opens at whatever time it opens. Then you get mad because somebody else is camped out too, and you try to push them out the way so you can be first in line. All because, <laughs> all because society has lost its reality with God. See, I see something and I've got to say something. You mean to tell me we cannot stop one day and say, Lord, thank you. And I'll wait till at least midnight and then I'll go shopping. See, I don't have a problem with Black Friday. I really don't. If you want to get a deal, fine. Go on out there and get your deal. I'm going to try to get me one too. But I'm going to honor the Lord first. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> but the, the, look at what we're teaching the younger generation. We're teaching a, a younger generation, throw away your values. Especially if you can get it on sale. Amen. Throw away God. As long as you can get that sale. Black Friday ain't Black Friday no more. It's Black Weekend. It's Black Thanksgiving Weekend. They might as well just say, stop saying Thanksgiving Weekend. It's Black Friday Weekend. Come on now. Get this. Get that. Buy it now. You can get it for $200. Get it now. But four time runs up. You know? And everybody, not everybody, but a lot of people get caught up in that. Listen. If I had all the money in the world and I could buy anything I want to buy, which I'm glad I can't, I still wouldn't run out there on a Black Friday, or excuse me, on a Thanksgiving night to go out there and sleep outdoors. Now watch this. How many of them folks sleeping outdoors would come in church and sit for two hours in a church service? Listening to the word of God and praising God. How many would do that? But yet, we'll get a sleeping bag. Sleep in the cold night. Get a tent. Put it out there in front of the door to the store. One lady, yeah. One lady camped out for a week. Now, that don't make any sense. Why, they're not going to open the store at least till 9 o'clock on th Thanksgiving night. Why are you there for a week in advance? <laughs> Got to put my reservation in. I'm going to be first in line. You know what I mean? She must have been eating out a can of pork and beans, hot dogs, or something. So, I mean, subjecting herself to craziness because I want to get the sale. The sale has more value than worshiping our Lord and our Savior. So, church, in my conclusion, I see something, and I got to say something. I'm going to write an editorial in the New Haven Red Show. Yes, I am. I'm going to write an editorial this week. My observation of Thanksgiving. What have we turned into? We have just gone crazy over materialism. And the merchants know that you're greedy. 
It's not about just getting a good sale. You're greedy. We are greedy. Humans are greedy by nature. And the merchants say, well, let's play on their greed. I remember the times when stores would close for Thanksgiving and for Christmas. Y'all remember those days? Amen. Not anymore. Stores are open Thanksgiving. In fact, they, 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 it, it kills them. They, they don't even want to close for Thanksgiving or Christmas. They're open so they can get your money. They don't care about you. They want your money. They don't care if you have a nice Christmas or not. They want your money. They don't care if you have a nice Thanksgiving or not. They want your money. And you... You know, and we are so dumb. We'll go out there and sleep in the street a week, two days, three days, night before. We don't care if it's cold. We don't care if it's snowing. We don't care what's going on. We'll do it and camp out so we can get that sale because we fed into the nonsense. I'm all for having a good economy, but I'm also good for having common sense and decency. And America is selling out. We're selling out on God. We're selling out on our families. We're selling out on the things that really matter just so we can get a sale. If you see something, if you see something, say something. God bless you. I'm done. Hallelujah. Well, I hope you enjoyed that message. If you see something, say something. Our society, I mean, it is just absolutely ridiculous what's happening nowadays on Thanksgiving Day. The merchants are putting out their, their wares and their merchandise, uh, not waiting for Thanksgiving Day to even end. Now, people are coming out right after dinner on Thanksgiving Day and going out to the stores and sleeping out in front of the malls and the, and the different stores where they can get the best deal. But what about your soul? What about the best deal for your soul? We hope you enjoyed the message, and uh, we'll tune in next week with us. And on behalf of Pastor Marcella Jenkins, I'm wanna, I certainly want to take this time to invite you to, to come and worship with us at the Sword of the Spirit Ministries. We're located at 260 Amity Road in Woodbridge. So come on out and worship with us. Service starts at 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings, and we're usually done around noon. So guess what? Come on in, start early, and leave early. Come on out and worship with us at the Sword of the Spirit Ministries, 260 Amity Road, in Woodbridge uh, where you'll be able to come and fellowship with Christians and have a great time learning about the Word of God. Come out and be with us at the Sword of the Spirit Ministries. Well, as time is up for me, so until next time, I'm Gary Jenkins. Thanks for being with us this week on Gospel America.